Okay, well, what I have here is a Yerf, Yerf Dog go kart with a Tecumseh a six and a half horsepower uh, Power Sport engine. Uh, just bought this thing and it didn't really want to run, so uh, I first checked the spark plug and the air filter, which is normally the first two places you want to go on any uh, gas engine this size when it doesn't want to run or doesn't want to run well enough so changed the air filter uh, changed the spark plug which was uh, fouled pretty bad shape and uh, pulled it. it it started right away but it wasn't running real smooth and then it died which I think it ran out of gas which is good at this point because the next time I tried to pull it I get this no engagement on the coil for the full start so what I'm going to have to do is take that coil off and uh, see what's going on in there and try to repair that. So I wanted to start videoing this. I've already got it kind of tore apart, but I wanted to start videoing this so that I could show someone out there who needed to know how to fix theirs uh, what would be the proper technique. To start with, um, to replace, to remove this cover, there's a screw there's two screws on the bottom, one here and one over on the other side. So if you look horizontally, just right under, right across underneath this, the bottom part of this coil cage, you'll see that there's two different screws there. And then um, to get the gas tank off, which was a little bit trickier, it uh, there's one screw. You'll have to drain your gas tank for sure. Uh, before you get to this, but luckily, like I said, mine was mine ran out of gas on me. You had to pull this fuel line off uh, to remove, completely remove your gas tank, but just right next to the fuel line. If you look up around the front, oops. If you look right up underneath the front, there's actually one or maybe two screws. Mine only had one holding the tank on, but there may be another one over here as well on the other side. Uh, where the fuel line comes in from the bottom of the tank, but mine only had this one. I pulled that screw out, pulled the line off, and the tank just lifted right off because that screw right here was the only one still holding me on. And so I had to get had to remove the tank to get that one off because I was able to pry the tank up enough to get the one on the top uh, just just right underneath the gas tank there. This one is easier to get to once you remove the gas tank, but I was able to pull the gas tank out and out of this slot here uh, to get to this one. But that one right there was still holding me on and I was not gonna be able to ever remove this. I'm sorry, this one, this one here was still holding me on and I was not gonna be able to remove that one right there until the gas tank was out of the way. So I'll start recording again here once I get this screw taken off and the recoil cage pulled out. And then we'll see where we go from there. And there it is. Oh, what a mess. Okay, as uh, as you've seen, I pulled that out and huge mouse nest in there. But uh Right now what I'm going to do, since the only thing that's still kind of holding this together are the springs, the linkages, um, which help uh, uh, adjust your idle. I'm going to pull it off right. Uh, it's trying to fall over on me, so hopefully, hopefully you can see this. I'm going to pull the spring off right here. And I'll pay close attention to how that goes back on. And uh, But for now I'm going to take that part off so that I can lay this whole recoil off on the bench. Okay, so I took the, the two springs off, actually. There's two different ones. Just pay very close attention on how the ends of those actually come off so that you'll know uh, actually in which holes are around which, uh, which ones to hook them back up to. One of them went around there on mine, and the other one went in a hole here. But I actually took a picture of how it went uh, when I took it off, so I'd advise you to do the exact same thing. Sorry, but I'm out here by myself and I couldn't video while I was doing it, so uh, just going to kind of continue from, from here. Um, as you can see, huge mouse nest. You can see the, the, the mess of 
insulation and different stuff that a mouse had carried up into into my coil here um, wires completely and this go-kart's fairly new and in good shape but as you can see uh, <laughs> bare wires everywhere almost chewed all the way in two which could um, could really be part of the problem why it doesn't want to run real good because that these wires actually go to the to the on off switch actually on the front right there that red switch actually on the the side of your recoil housing and they connect right there that's the inside of the switch so you just pull them quick disconnects off of that switch and then that pretty much frees your whole case up so that you can get it off here and work work on it now I am going to go ahead and take these two screws out there was actually one right uh, one right here in this hole that you see I'm pointing at there was one there and then there's another one right here these two small screws uh, see if I can point a little bit better uh, that one right in there right there I'm gonna take those two out so that this whole contraption spring and everything this whole plate will actually come off the side of the housing so that I can finally set it on the bench and work on the on the coil well I'm probably gonna have to end uh, this video a little sooner than what I wanted to I was wanting to be able to show you is uh, putting it all back together as well but as I just uh, mentioned to you all these uh, uh, these ground wires are all chewed up so I'm gonna have to replace both of them and also uh, the line that comes out of here and feeds back down to the carburetor chewed completely in half so <laughs> uh, a lot more problems here than uh, what I anticipated I thought that my only problem was going to be just fixing the recoil so uh, that's not so and as I started looking inside this recoil and like I said, this go-kart was actually in really good shape, so it surprised me to see this many issues now that I'm tearing it apart. But uh, also with this recoil, normally as you pull this cord, I do know this much about them. I'm not a, a full-time small engine mechanic, but I spend a little time with these things. And normally as you pull on this cord, you have little fingers, if you will, that spin out. Um, one on each side, one from this side and another one from this side here. They are both gone, completely gone. Uh, nothing spinning out. And as I started looking around uh, on the magneto here for the engine, I noticed that one of my fingers is stuck to the magnet right there. So, uh, have not been able to locate the second one as of yet. I've spun this thing around quite a bit and tried to see if I could see the other one stuck in there somewhere, but uh, it's been rubbing. It, it's come out some time ago. The other one probably has because you can see some wear marks on on some of this, uh, like right there. I'm probably making you dizzy, sorry, but uh, there's a little wear mark right there where these things have been lodged in there. So the last few pulls, it's probably only been operating by this one. Who knows how long ago the other one flew out or got completely smashed. But sorry to end this video short on you. Um, I was wanting to, like I said, be able to get it all put back together and show you show you how it works. And I may still do that once I get some parts and replacement parts and get to the point where I can start building it back. I might repost. Um, but for now, that's at least what it's going to take to get the thing off. Thanks for looking. Bye.